maintaining a meditative mindset is a core importance for learning anything. When I say meditative, I don't mean sitting on a hill and sitting on your heels and going home. Um, well, that might be part of it. You, know, you might do that before a practice or before you're going to learn something to clear the mind. But the, in, in the actual process of learning something, we need to have the ability to slow down and stretch out time. Now, time is largely a perception that's created through the brain. We have a shared perception, and therefore we have this shared construct called time. Now, you in your individual awareness have the ability to slow that down and to experience things moment to moment in an incremental manner. This requires a level of focus. A very simple meditative technique that you can do from your day-to-day -day life is a four-count breath meditation. Four counts in, four counts hold, four counts out, four counts hold. Maintain doing that through regular parts of your day, doing regular things, and you'll get used to the idea of being present, observing the mind while you are living your life. Now, as for playing instruments, you have to slow it right now. And if you've got a pretty overreactive mind that likes to do lots of things, like me, you'll do something like learn the meditation, and then you'll go to do the meditation, the four count meditation, and you'll be like, Oh, yep, I can do this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, yep, all right, I should be relaxed now. You know, and, but, but the mind's still going. So the point of the meditation is to create the fertile ground for you to have the opportunity to let go, to relax. So uh, the big thing is to say, I, I put no expectations on myself. I allow myself to release all obligations in this moment. I let go. I let go of control. I let go of any expectations. Now, when I pick up an instrument, I have, I have a core intention, and that is... I, I want to learn the function of this instrument. I want to learn how to play it better. I want to be able to play in different keys with different rhythms. And behind that core motivation is the incentive. The incentive to get better at something. To learn a craft to the, to the, to the point of mastery. And also just to do something interesting and fun with the brain and the art of just getting in there and doing things. Another incentive might be a performance incentive. You might have a gig coming up. You'd like to put a bit of a part of an instrument in there and, and, um, and you don't know that instrument very well yet. So you work really hard and practice on little bits here and there so that you can play that instrument on that gig. Some people might have incentives for uh, performing for a crowd and, uh, and getting adulation in that way. My suggestion is not to use that as a big incentive, but rather uh, self-development for the purpose of serving others. And this, in my experience, has been... Uh, the most effective incentive that all in all when we set our minds and our hearts to serve others a huge resource becomes available to us it unlocks our energy field and it makes us open vulnerable and 
in a state of reception. So when I pick up an instrument, I think it took me a few days to get a good sound out of this because the, the technique is, is, uh, is very different for an end-blown flute. And I've watched other people play it before through my travels in Eastern Europe and Turkey, and I've seen their dedication to it. I didn't take to it thinking, oh, I, I can just pick this up and I can just do it and poof. The wonderful thing about this kavar is that it requires me, the instrument by default requires me to slow down within myself in order to get the controlled breath and the tone out of it. So it's, a, it's an instrument that teaches me to meditate, <laughs> to let go, because if I don't let go, I don't get the tone. So the incentive is to make a sound, to make a nice sound. And that works for me. It requires very controlled breathing similar to singing in ways, so it's like I'm singing through a pipe. But it required me, in order to first make that sound, that I had to slow my perception right down. I had to stretch time right out, and then I had to be persistent. I had to take to it with a positive attitude, to know that I will get it. But I need to be persistent, and I need to come to it in a relaxed and calm state, with no expectations, letting go, and in moments where the magic of that, that inner content was, was in me, inner content was in me. <laughs> I would pick it up and I would suddenly be able to make a sound. And then I might get a little bit excited, like, oh, I'm making a sound. And then that excitement would reduce my ability to control my breath and be in the state that's required to make the sound. So it's an instrument that forced me to pay attention to my state of mind and having it with all of my other instruments, it's, it's really balanced things out. This instrument representing the, the element of, of air. Anyways, that video is probably long enough, and I'm going to play some music. So um, have a wonderful day.